The role of ethical boards the last few years in science have become bigger and bigger. While they originated in medical science and through psychology, they came into social science in general. And these ethical boards are on the one hand very logical to have them, to have some checks on ethics beforehand, whereas on the other hand, people are discussing whether they're valid enough for qualitative research and whether qualitative research is not killed by these uh, ethical boards. So in this lecture, I would like to show you something about the research proposals in qualitative research. When you write a research proposal in qualitative research, very often you do not use a more deductive approach, but a more inductive approach, which means that beforehand you don't know everything yet. Beforehand, you don't know really what you can find. So you are going to use abduction. And in order to do that, you use the good practice of flexibility. You use sensitizing concepts, temporary concepts that give some directions to your research, but does not define your research completely beforehand. You use an iterative approach going back and forth between theory and data. And because you use this, you might shift your topic slightly. You might shift to different people. You might shift to different informants different sites of observation, different research questions even. So that is a general issue with research proposals in qualitative research. These research proposals are a bit temporary. They're sensitizing research proposals. So, and if we use, if we claim that qualitative research is great for finding serendipitous findings, well, you can't put that a serendipitous finding in your research proposal, can you? And if we say that another good practice of qualitative research is a strong focus on context, you can't write everything about the context before your research because you don't know the context yet. So it's pretty hard to write a research proposal in which everything is fixed, in which all ethical issues are already tackled. So how can you then give this research proposal to an ethical board, to an institutional review board, and then ask them to say, well, this is ethically sound or it's not sound. This permission that you get then is based on a temporary report, a sensitizing research proposal. And according to some authors, people that are good in ticking boxes and ticking all the ethical boxes, they do get ethical permissions rather than people doing sound research. And especially Martin Hammersley, he written an article that was called Against the Ethicist on the Evils of Ethical Regulation. And what he says is, are ethical committees capable? Probably you know the answer by Martin Hammersley. No, they're not. They're not capable of judging about the research simply because they do not know the context in which the research is taking place. Is the control legitimate according to the ethical principles used by these ethical committees? And Hammersley again says, no, they're not because they are taking away the agency from the researcher by using their own agency and their own. They're forcing some kind of ethics on the researcher. And then thirdly, are the consequences of the committee good? Again, according to Hammersley, absolutely not. Because what we get is fake proposals. Proposals in which we simply deal with these ethical boards, but then forget about them. And maybe that's a bigger issue than not checking ethics beforehand. So maybe we should do something else. And my humble suggestion would be to uh, pose questions rather than have people ticking boxes. At the University of Amsterdam, we pose questions continuously about ethics rather than saying you have to do this or you have to do that. So that's the first suggestion. The second suggestion is bring peers into your research because with these peers you can discuss. So rather than wait until you publish, you can bring them already into the field. So have discussions in the field about ethics. If you're doing a PhD in qualitative research, discuss with your fellow 
PhD students or discuss with your supervisor or anyone else about the ethical issues. Discuss during your analysis and discuss while writing. Sometimes it's really terrible to write about the people that helped you so well in your research and then you're, you come back from field work and you start writing about them and you feel you're pretty nasty. You have to discuss about it. You have to discuss with peers. So are ethical boards per se wrong? No, they're not. But there are serious issues with research proposals, in qualitative research and ethical boards.